one thing that I'm sure you're interested in, as I was as well, is how do I get the most out of my brain every day? And how do I make it so that I can pace brain energy so that it lasts and so it's even keel? So I don't have these dips where I'm feeling fatigued and then I need to ramp myself up again, likely with caffeine or sugar or something else. How do we get that even keel energy that lasts? And then probably you want some to go home to your family or to a loved one and have some energy left for them. And then you want it to ramp down at the end of the day, right? So that you can get that restorative sleep that helps the brain. So what do we need to focus on there? How do we even start? From my experience as a leadership performance coach, working with other leaders, my own experience in leadership, and also pulling from my education and experience in the health, wellness, medical areas. There are six aspects of mental energy. Interestingly enough, these six aspects of mental energy are also directly related to your health, the health of your brain, the health of your body, all the way down to the cellular level, the molecular level, down to your DNA. Now that's something for another podcast episode for sure. But the six aspects of mental energy, that's what I'll be talking about today. I'm Lucy Gable, integrative leadership coach and trainer, author, speaker, and professor at the George Washington University School of Medicine grad program. And this is my podcast, Leadership, Life, Health, and Happiness. The Neuro Leadership Institute says that the five most energy consuming activities of the brain are understanding information that's coming into your brain, putting information into memory, taking information out of your memory banks, making decisions and inhibiting. That means not acting on your first impulse, but thinking about what you're gonna do and maybe doing something differently. And if you think about it, if you're in a leadership role, you're doing something like this all the time. So our brain uses fuel just like our body does. When we're using our brain so intensely all day, it's very similar to going to the gym and working out intensely all day with your body. Except you wouldn't think to go to the gym and work out all day without at least some water and a sandwich and you wouldn't work out for eight to 12 hours without having to sit down for a moment, take a few breaths. But essentially, we're doing that to our brains. So what does our brain use as fuel? The very essence of fuel is food. Food is the only thing that our bodies and brains use for energy. Just like gas burns up in a gas tank, that's what we do when we use it in terms of calories. And there are better choices than others in terms of fuel, just like there are for your car. And there are better times to fuel ourselves than others. The brain and body thrive on the same energy. We don't need to eat one thing for the body and one thing for the brain. That would be just a total mess of our creation, wouldn't it be? (laughs) When you're reducing your risk for cardiovascular disease and diabetes, You're also reducing your risk for dementia and depression. When you're increasing the nutrients that protect your blood vessels and your skin and your eyes, these are the same nutrients that protect your brain and keep it functioning well and performing optimally. If you're not doing that already, you definitely want to look into it. And I talk all about that in my book, Eat to Lead. But this isn't about food or about my book, Eat to Lead. This is a much bigger picture because there are several other conditions for our brains to work optimally, to have that even keel energy all day and to ramp up in the morning and ramp down at night. In fact, there are five other aspects that we need to pay attention to in order to have this.
The second aspect, as you might have guessed, is rest. I often say our brain works best when it's fed and rested because it's true. Sleep is one aspect of rest. It helps the brain to put all the information into the right files and the right places and also to clear out the beta amyloid proteins that we know are associated with dementia. And there are other aspects of rest that need to be incorporated into your day. We found that our brains can only go on high speed, full power for a certain amount of time. And I'm going to say it's different for everyone because some people can go in high speed, full power for 45 minutes, and then their focus and concentration starts to drop off. Others can go for an hour and a half. Some I know can go for three hours, but that's about it. And it really does depend on what activity we're talking about. You have to experiment to know what your endpoint is on your different projects. And when you feel that dip in energy coming along, or when you know it's gonna happen, it's important to give your brain a break. You need to remember this for your teams as well. I can't tell you how many meetings I've sat in on where the person leading the meeting just wanted to go for hours on end without stopping, without giving people a minute to stand up and take a breather. What's happening is that brain energy is draining, draining, and we're losing people's attention and we're losing their ability to think smartly and clearly. So we really need to take this mental functioning into account when we plan things for our people. What do I mean when I say break? I mean, move off the computer, out of the desk, out of the office, whatever it is you are doing, step away from it physically, and then moving out of your thinking brain into your senses. That's the basics of how we give our brain a break and helps us to look at problems in new ways and think of new ideas. We can recharge in about five minutes and get fresh for the next activity. Stick around to the end of this podcast and I'll lead you through one of those brain breaks. You can replay it whenever you like until you feel like you've got it down yourself. The third aspect is movement. It can be all kinds of movement. The benefit to the brain here is circulation. When we increase circulation through the body, the brain is included in that. And we're increasing oxygen and nutrients to the brain. And we're clearing it from any toxins, the same as it does for the body. We're also strengthening the blood vessels, opening them up, So even if you're not an avid exerciser, we just want to do some things a few times throughout the day, not just one time, but a few little breaks throughout the day that increase your circulation and that helps your brain to have that consistent, constant energy. Even just a few minutes could be a walk around the block, a walk up the stairs, a walk around the building. There are other things, for example, I'm a yoga practitioner, so I could say it could be standing on your head or doing a shoulder stand. Now those first three elements are things you can do. The next three are ways that we train our brain to give ourselves energy. Mindset, vision, and communication. I'm going to start with communication. Communication has so many angles to it. In this case, what I'm talking about is how you speak to yourself. Certain thoughts will sap your mental energy and others will add to it. I don't think that anyone I've ever worked with did not have the practice of coming down hard on themselves, being super critical, and also pretty darn mean. To themselves. And the question that always arises is, is that something you'd say to your best friend? And the answer is always no. So while we're sitting maybe in our office typing a memo or speaking with someone or up on stage or in front of the conference table, what are you thinking about yourself? 
when we think negative thoughts about ourselves, when we say to ourselves, you are so stupid, you idiot, how could you? Why aren't you smarter? Those energy zapping phrases make you feel low. And as they go on throughout the day, they take away more and more of those energy reserves. Now, if you can catch yourself thinking these thoughts, you can say, no, that's not true. I'm good. No, that's not true. People like me. No, that's not true. I've done this before. Contradict as much as you can. And that will add mental energy. You can pay attention to how you feel. You'll feel the energy come and go based on what you're saying to yourself. And our mental and physical energy are very well connected. I'll never forget when I was a personal trainer in Manhattan, I would work out with the trainers. Most of the trainers were males. And there was this one particular person I was working with one day and I was doing a bench press and he was trying to motivate me. And he said something like, you suck, you can't do it. And I had the bar halfway up and I just felt my energy drop all the way down. That was not motivating for me. And it took away my physical energy as well as my mental energy. So we do feel that energy zap in our bodies as well as our brain. So after I put that bar on the rack, I got off the bench and I had to tell him right there, that's not gonna do it for me. <laughs> I had another extreme example of that when I was in Washington DC on a run with a friend and we were running at a really good pace. And then I started telling her a story that made me very sad and I just slowed way down. I wanted to stop actually. It was profound for me that just talking about this situation took all of my running energy and threw it out the window. So communication, watch what you're saying to yourself. This applies to your team as well. How are we motivating them and are we giving them mental energy or are we taking it away? Let's talk about vision. Vision also plays a key role in your mental energy because it affects your drive and your enthusiasm and excitement. And that's what gets you up in the morning, that vision. On the other hand, if you don't have a vision, you don't have that drive. It doesn't matter if you are the ultimate one in charge or if you're part of a much larger company and you're actually working towards their vision you still have to have your own vision within that. You have to have that picture in your mind of the future that you're working towards. And it's really worth it to visit that vision regularly, every day in fact. Every day, give yourself a few minutes to roll that motion picture in your head about your ideal future or about the dreams that you have your goals that make you happy, that make you excited, the reasons why you push forward. If you don't have one, start to make one. I can't tell you how many people I worked with that didn't have a vision. Yes, they were leaders or owners, but they had been working so hard and focusing so much on what's right in front of them that they forgot why they were doing what they were doing. They hadn't visioned for five, 10 years. And we had to get that neural connection going again in their brains. The pathways in our brains, the things that we think about most often are the places that we go easiest to. So if we haven't thought about that vision in a while, that pathway has been grown over with weeds and we just need to start wearing that pathway in again. So initially you've got to make it a point to think about your vision. And to dream up ideas, who cares if they're way out of what you think is the realm of possibility? Allow yourself to dream. And then once you catch that vision that you like, you go over and over it again, and it starts to become something that you naturally see every day. So your vision also plays a key role in your mental energy. It affects your drive. And you know that's catchy too it also affects those around you. So you've got to have it in there. 
if you want to radiate it out to everyone else. And finally, let's talk about mindset. Just like the other two aspects of thinking, mindset also will give you energy mentally or take it away. Of course, you might think, well, how is mindset any different from how I communicate to myself and my vision? Mindset is how you handle things in the immediate present. The mindset is your ability to stay strong in difficult situations, your ability to think about the positives when you're surrounded by negatives, when you come to a blockade in the road, when you hit a wall with things that you've been trying, when it feels like you're working and working and nothing is coming out of it like you expected. That's when the mindset really needs to kick in. It doesn't come naturally for most people. Some people really do have it naturally, and that's just such a blessing. But for most of us, we can get dragged down. I mean, some of us, it takes more than others, but everybody gets dragged down. And that's when we need to flip on that mindset that looks for the opportunity and gifts that come out of negative circumstances. When you get hit by consistent roadblocks and walls, it could be easy to take it as something personal, that none of this is going to work, everything you're doing is failing. And if you're not someone who has a natural positive mindset, which is almost all of us, we can grow that part of our brain as well. And it just takes practice. When we're practicing metacognition, watching our thoughts, we find ourselves going down the path of negativity or maybe hopelessness. We catch that and then we reframe it. What's another way of looking at it? What's another angle? And that's how we start to shift our own mindset. And just like everything else with our brain, when we think down a new pathway, it takes a while to make that pathway the natural way that our thinking goes, but we eventually get there. Mindset will give you energy mentally or take it away. There are six major aspects of mental energy. It might be obvious to you now that these aspects profoundly affect your ability to lead others. Energy that you create for yourself absolutely radiates out into the people who are around you the most. And of course, if you're a leader at work, if you have a business, the kind of energy that your people have is what radiates out onto your customers and it affects your business entirely. Do any of these six areas resonate with you as something that you'd like to work on? Because if so, my leadership program is opening up again, a mastermind group where a small group of people in leadership roles will get together on a bi-monthly basis and have conversations around these topics encouraging each other and holding each other accountable in taking small steps to get better at each one of these. I've run many of these kinds of programs and they really do work. It's one thing to read a book, to talk about it or listen to a talk about it. It's another thing completely to put it into action. And it's a third thing to keep it going because when you're putting things into action, it can be really hard at first and It can stall out when there aren't people around you that are also doing that same thing, that are also encouraging you and that are living into those goals as well. So this will be a place where you can converse about your difficulties and your concerns at work or even personally, where you have people that understand what you're talking about and maybe even have gotten through some of the issues that you're going through. Check it out. It's lucygable.com forward slash leadership program. And now as promised, I'm going to give a little sample of how you can take a short brain break anywhere. You can take it in your office, at your home, sitting on the train or a bus or some kind of public transport. Just definitely don't do it while you're driving. So if you have a few minutes to sit with me and just recharge, we'll do that now. 
You can also pause this recording and come back to it later when you need it. And you can come back to it and replay it if you want to use it in the future, because it does take a little practice to get these things down. Heck, I've been doing it for a long time now, and I even like to be guided by someone else sometimes. It just takes less mental energy. But before we do that, I'm going to say, if you like this episode, click like or give it five stars, share it with someone if you think they'll like it too, and comment and let me know what you want to talk about next time. Every time this episode gets interactions by a listener, it tells the algorithm on the platforms that it's worthy of being pushed out to more listeners. So just by interacting with me, it helps this information to get out further into the world. So have a seat, someplace comfortable as possible. You can keep your eyes open to start. And then take a few deep breaths in, fill your lungs all the way up. On your exhale, slow it way down and get all the air out. So you might even feel like you need to squeeze your lower abdomen in just a little bit to get that little last bit of air out. And while you're exhaling, envision all of your muscles relaxing, letting go of any unnecessary tension with each exhale. Wherever you are, just look around the room. Find something that you like looking at and let your eyes settle there. Notice the colors and the shapes. Notice the textures. Allow the visual to distract you. Notice that you might be feeling significantly more present just doing this. And now you can allow yourself to close your eyes and really be present to your body and your breath. Feel your body on the surface that you've placed it, whether it be in a seat or anywhere else. Feel the weight of your body getting heavier and sinking in. Exhaling, releasing any tension that might be unnecessary. With a relaxed body and calm breath, place your attention into your sense of hearing and just hear the sounds around you. There's nothing you have to do about the sounds. You're just hearing them come and go, or maybe they stay. Stick with the sounds. now slowly opening your eyes. Notice immediately after this, whether your brain is working just a little more efficiently, a little more sharply. When you practice this on your own, you can rotate through a sense of sight, 
sense of touch being in your body and the sense of sound, just like we did. Or you can just pick one and stay there. You'll have different needs at different times and you'll also have different amounts of time. A minute is really all you need to bring yourself into rejuvenating your mental capacity. Thanks for joining me. This is Lucy Gable. I'll talk to you next time.